And joining me now is Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, of course, who oversees FEMA and so much more. Secretary Mayorkas, first of all, thank you. I uh, want to ask, how does the misinformation impact relief efforts? Very, very significantly, Andrea. Thank you for having me. It is extraordinarily damaging. Most of all, it is extraordinarily damaging to survivors of Hurricane Helene, of natural disasters. Individuals lose trust in their government. They are reluctant to seek the assistance that they need for, to meet their immediate um, uh, demands, food, water, shelter. Uh, they don't seek it. They are entitled to it. They need it. We implore them to ignore the false information that is being spread and to seek the help that we have available to them. It is also extremely demoralizing to our federal law and our uh, emergency response personnel, the state and local emergency response personnel who are risking their lives in the service of those in need. When we reach into flooded zones, when we reach into a home that has been destroyed to assist another individual, we don't ask about their party affiliation. We are there to help. And they need to understand that. They need to trust us. They can rely on us. We have assistance for them. That is what these extraordinarily heroic individuals are dedicated to doing. Now, something that is not a rumor, as far as we know, is how stretched and understaffed FEMA is. New York Times, for instance, reporting that of the 50 disaster operation directors, only one was available as of Monday. So how is FEMA going to put all of this together with back-to-back -to -back hurricanes? Uh, FEMA uh, prides itself on the slogan of uh, flexible. Uh, FEMA. We can meet the needs of Hurricane Helene survivors and uh, the individuals who will be in need as a result of the devastating Hurricane Milton. That is what FEMA does. It does it in support of state and local officials. And we have been directed by President Biden, by Vice President Harris, to not only dedicate the FEMA resources, the resources of the Department of Homeland Security, but the resources of the entire federal government. And that is indeed what we are doing. When we take a look at the height of Hurricane Helene, there were 5.1 million people without power. That number has been reduced by 4.8 million. We, at the height of Hurricane Helene, there were approximately 3.4 million people without communication. That number has been reduced by approximately 3.1 million. We have tens of millions of liters of water and food and commodities available in anticipation of Hurricane Milton. This is what the brave men and women of FEMA and all of the brave men and women in an emergency response do for a living. They dedicate themselves to the well-being of others. We have the resources to meet the demand. Now, you can say how much has been accomplished, but, of course, for the hard-pressed people in some of those mountain areas, for instance, of North Carolina, that's where it's really critical. Um, do you need Congress to come back? in order to allocate more funds. Do you need a supplemental now with back-to-back -back hurricanes and Congress now out for the political season? They won't be back till January. Andrea, uh, two things. One, there are indeed people suffering from the devastating impacts of Hurricane Helene. And one of the great challenges is the fact that the flooding uh, has made areas very difficult to access. Uh, we have to save people. Life and safety is our first priority. And then we can begin uh, in the hardest hit areas, the most remote areas, to clear the debris and reach people in need. Um, the fact of the matter is, and we have been clear throughout, and let me reiterate, that we have the resources we need, we have the funding that we need to meet the challenge of Hurricane Helene and the challenge of Hurricane Milton. But we are operating on a continuing resolution that is not stable funding for the long haul, and therefore we need a real budget and not a Band-Aid for the long haul, because the uh, gravity and frequency of extreme weather events have only increased as a result of climate change and its real-life impact on the people of this country. So do you want Congress to come back? 
the president uh, noted correctly that he has asked Congress to come back and provide funding so we have stability for the long haul. That is what we plan for. But let me be clear again that we could meet the needs immediately. And because of climate change, do you think you have to rethink how FEMA is funded? And should a separate agency be handling this, the, the climate emergencies? Well, um, FEMA is an agency within the Department of Homeland Security. No, I'm aware of that. Uh, and, and, and FEMA draws upon the resources of the Department of Homeland Security. We work seamlessly as one department, a cohesive force in support of the American people. And we also reach outside of the Department of Homeland Security as one united administration in the service of one united country. We have to put those politics aside and remember that we are one country and we assist people in need regardless of politics. Now, one final thing, there's been a lot of politics here. We know what's been happening at the top of the ticket, but there are uh, significant criticisms by some Republican governors uh, who are not generally responding politically. They're responding because they don't think things were placed in the right position. They didn't have enough supplies. Uh, for instance, gasoline. The governor there says that they have enough gasoline supplies, but you see that there are empty gas tanks and people don't know how to evacuate in Florida right so now. We, Andrea, we, we support state and local officials. The governor has indeed um, stated uh, publicly that they have the supply of gasoline that the people of his state need. Uh, we uh, are in constant contact with state and local officials to understand their needs and to be able to deliver whatever federal resources we have available and that we have the authority uh, to provide. We support the state and local officials, regardless of politics, driven only by the needs of the American people.